William Rockwell, a mysterious old man with a knack for murder that not only stretches to random strangers, but also seemingly his own bloodline, as we learned last time on the lower levels of the Orpheus. For today, though, we are going to be venturing back along the first floor here and see if we can explore the rest of what this level has to offer us. Yeah, you might recall last time that we were blocked by the steward here for our lack of proper apparel. And we managed to pick up something probably more appropriate for the occasion, though it only just struck me now that we've been wearing, wearing our rubber gloves this entire time, but let's go ahead and put on our fancy new duds and see what this party has in store for us. Of course. Right this way. Well then, have fun. I am Arthur. Arthur Rockwell. I'm Hilda Rockwell. You should have already witnessed the reason we are here. Our father, William, the Red Knife, that is how it all began. Within one generation, father was able to make our family filthy rich. And that was all done after he obtained that red stone knife. Our father was a cold person to begin with. But I could see father was slowly converting to evil. Yes, it was as if that red stone possessed him. We were terrified, so we both were planning on killing him on this ship. But our father was thinking the same. He tried to kill us and succeeded because of that knife. A long time ago, beyond that painting, fate was determined. And with our introduction to Arthur and Hilda Rockwell, it's now time we finally learn about the bloodied and cursed origins of the Rockwell family name. Yeah, it seems that we've been flung all the way back to the middle of the 15th century to some faraway castle. And while we don't initially know why we're, why we're here, I'm sure if we poke around and maybe talk to some of the locals, we can figure out just what's going on. Sadly, though, it does not seem like the king is going to be an avenue for information, as his guards are pretty adamant about not letting us in, and I don't really want to press my luck with the, uh, the armed regiment here, so, I don't know, let's poke around elsewhere and see if maybe we can't figure out some other uh, source for information. I can only assume, though, that the guards are just doing their normal duty of protecting the king, that I'm sure nothing nothing untoward is going on with his majesty. But it definitely does become quite clear that 
Something is amiss in the castle here, as we do find a dead guard. And really, this is just the tip of the iceberg with what's going wrong in the castle. It's just, with this particular flashback, or trip back in time, it's not really something we can solve, just something we are left to be witness to. And with that, we finally find out just how the Rockwell family came under ownership of that mysterious gem from so very long ago. And we also learn that uh, it seems that murder has been a pretty common trait in the Rockwell family name for well, seemingly centuries, but... Well, that, that only tells us about the origin of the Redstone. It really doesn't fill us in on any more about it. It seems that William is probably going to be the source for all those answers. Maybe Arthur is going to be able to tell us just where he might be. Our father, that knife has destroyed this ship. You are like us, just another prisoner of this ship. I have something to ask of you. I want you to find three more plates like this one here. You will need it in order to reach our father. We will stay and wait for you here. So it seems that we are going to have to deal with a multi-piece puzzle here, which Arthur is nice enough to give us the first piece. Still, it would be nice if he had any more clues for us. Please, find it quickly. It doesn't seem, though, that he is going to be of any more help. Maybe, maybe Hilda Rockwell will be of some more assistance to us. Be careful. That woman lurks beyond here. She will kill you if she finds you. Try to divert her attention. And indeed, she does give us a very, very helpful hint for something that's going to be coming up very shortly. But before we leave this massive dining hall, there are a few odds and ends that we might as well look into, such as this really bizarre painting of what appears to be some type of lizard man. It does seem incredibly out of place, but I don't know, maybe it's some nod to some other From Software game, though. At this point, there still weren't that many. Also on the dining room table here, we do find yet another claim ticket, so... In case you were still looking to do a little bit of gambling, or you hadn't finished that up yet, you could get a little bit more of an advantage for that. So we have a locked door that we'll need to keep in mind for the future. 
But outside of that, there's really nothing else to this large hall, except for some very lovely stained glass. For now, though, it's time to continue pressing on forward through the first floor here. Making sure to pick up that astral piece that the steward left for us. Sadly, nothing else, but you might have noticed behind the steward, there was an additional door. <laughs> yeah, and it seems that danger is already waiting in store for us, but there's a light switch that... Yeah, while it does illuminate the lower area here, it doesn't completely eliminate the danger, as you can probably still tell by the, uh, the music going on. And if we carefully make our way up the stairs, and we get a view of that ghost lady we have seen before. And she is pretty much a very large barrier that we do need to get around. Well, initially, it doesn't seem like there's anything down here that might help. There is this very conspicuous-looking mechanical bird here. It seems, though, that it is currently broken. But if we do a little bit of poking and prodding, we do notice that there is a little bit of a hatch on the back here. And wouldn't you know it, whenever we picked up that film reel from the kitty area, we also did manage to pick up a mysterious gear, which happens to fit perfectly. <coughs> and while it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, this is the diversion we need to get around the lady and turn on the lights. You do have to be exceptionally fast, though. The bird calling doesn't take very long to turn off, and once that turns off, well, if a lady pins you up against a corner, you're more than likely going to be dead very quickly. Also, while we haven't really had to use the mechanic very much in the past, we do want to make sure and go back downstairs, because, well, you'll find out soon enough that well, we're not completely done with the gear just yet. But, with the ghost now out of the way, we have a few new doors that we can check out on the upper level here. Try the right door first. Gives us a pretty gloomy view of the outside, though well, it is nice to get some fresh air after being trapped in the lower levels for so very long. But other than that, it just holds another sun plate in case we need to turn in some of our astral pieces. But our real means of progression is through this door. You still want to be mindful of the lights, though, even though it doesn't really seem that dark. That lady ghost can still pop up anywhere and be a real nuisance in these really tight corridors. Yeah, you know, overall, there's a real sense of claustrophobia from the setting being on a, a cruise ship. And I really feel it, it works to the limitations of the movement for the game. <laughs> it can lead some, to some pretty tense moments, but this one is pretty easily averted as long as you're able to find the light switch by the door here.
It might be that if they had some similar moments to the ones earlier on in the game where some of the lights were broken, maybe it could make some of these encounters a little bit more difficult, but... Well, these doors, or at least two of them, have what appear to be almost Greek frescoes above them. Maybe we should check out the office first. Might give us a better sense of just where we are. And though it is a bit hard to make out, seems we're in a very, very impressive marble-laden pool. Still, there's no way to get to the pool from the office, so I guess we are going to have to use one of those two adjacent doors, and, well, at this point, the images above the doors now make a little bit more sense. One of them is a man, and one of them is a woman, and that's because each, each one of these doors is, well, a gender-oriented changing room. Now, by going into the ladies' changing room, there isn't really too much to it, but if you do happen to have a little bit of curiosity on your side and investigate some of the lockers, well, you might find nothing. Yep, still, still nothing. Seems... Seems pretty pointless to check in these, but I think third time will be the charm. Indeed, we have hit the jackpot by finding yet another curing potion. Oh, it's pretty good to find those where you can. I, I think currently, by by sheer skill and avoidance, I'm manage just managing to stay in relatively good health, but still, even at this point... Still only have about seven health potions all total. Yeah, we get yet another very impressive looking room with... Yeesh, that is a terrifying looking picture down there on the base of the pool. Seems to be something of a monstrous looking fish. Honestly, that would probably put me at ill ease to swim in something like that, but I don't know, maybe maybe at the time it was, uh, I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure at the time it was still very monstrous, but the rest of this is very lovely. Sadly, nothing really useful in there. Still, we do manage to find a, well, a familiar ghost. There was a full moon. And I was reading a book under the luminous light of the moon. I loved reading at night. It was only then that I could enjoy peace. I died. That midnight... The moon was stained blood red. Sadly, it's a bit too overcast to see just what Red Moon is talking about. It was midnight. The blood stained moon was glaring at me. Yeah, this ghost has a very. Interesting way with words, but he's got an even more interesting pal. In the form of this odd-shaped crystal. The bottom of the pool. It's that fish's eye. When the moon emits its luminous red glow, try and insert it. And then we get a very, very strange puzzle piece to... Even more odd puzzle that this young boy is well filled us in on. 
The problem is that, well, even though we have this large, large fish's eye, well, there's just a lot of water in the way. Maybe, yeah, maybe there has to be some way nearby that we can, uh, we can possibly drain the pool. Probably through this, this hatch here, leading to one of the lower areas. But yeah, while that ghost might not have seemed immediately familiar, its voice is definitely familiar, as it was the one that gave us a hint regarding the young girl and her location in a very deep and faraway hole. And indeed, if you read the notes that are given whenever you meet the ghost, you find out that that particular ghost is named Oscar Rockwell, as more than likely one the son of Arthur Rockwell. But we've hit pay dirt yet again. Should be a pretty easy puzzle to solve. With one small caveat. Yeah, much like the little girl ghost, we have to figure out some way to quell that uh, tortured spirit there before we can really continue on in the room. And without any other avenues of places to go, well, might as well go ahead and check this door. What should I do? It won't move. If I don't fix it, I too will end up like that person. Well, we are pretty good at fixing stuff. Maybe we can offer help. I'm dead. Sir William will kill me. Please, God, help me. Seems, though, that this ghost is not really keen on us getting too close to them to figure out just what is wrong, but... Well, considering they were standing next to this toy bird here... This broken toy bird... It becomes pretty clear just what we have to do. And this is exactly why we made sure to keep carrying that gear along with us, because, you know, much like the toy crow, this has a similar problem. It moved! Oh, thank God! And we've solved another poor tormented spirit's problem, but... Well, it doesn't really help us any more in our particular situation. And indeed, it, just a quick survey of the room shows us that there's really nothing else in here, except maybe some umbrellas, but... Hmm. Doesn't really seem to be any other place we can go, though... Well, what's that? It seems... Yeah, there's a little compartment that's opened up at the base of the toy parakeet here with a broken plate. Do you want it? Do you want it? Go find it! Go find it! So it seems that we are flung into a wintry cemetery. Only a mere three years, I think, before the Orpheus set sail. And I assume that, well, considering we were sent back here via that broken plate, that maybe somewhere in the cemetery we should be able to find 
a not broken version of said plate. Seems as though there's not really m anything in the shack outside of a hunchback. And this disfigured gentleman is the groundskeeper for the cemetery, and as, well, you can probably imagine, he's not really too keen on us being here it's so late at night. He was, gives us a bit of a cryptic warning here that really might not be advantageous to our health to stick around. Still, we do need to find that plate. And, well, these very large headstones are going to be part of that puzzle. Along with that very tiny mausoleum there, but... Well, if we happen to read these more large, obvious tombstones... We find that, even though they are pretty old, the writing on them is pretty clear. And, for each one of them, they do give a little bit of... Well, it's not really uh, what you would normally find on a headstone, but each one of them seems to emphasize some, well, portion of a beginning, a middle, and an end. Though the third one is really not as clear about which one it might be, as it seems to focus on the fact that it's, well, infinity, but as long as you focus on the fact that it says between, you can probably keep that in mind as being the middle portion. In addition to that, each headstone on the back has a pretty unique emblem. Looks to be a, a castle, fish, and I think the last one is supposed to be a wing. And located next to the small mausoleum are three similarly marked little buttons. So, what you have to do here is press them in the order of beginning, middle, and end. Though, I did get a little bit confused because, well, I failed to notice that that between option was supposed to be the middle, but... You do want to be a little bit in a hurry, because you might notice in the background there is another set of steps. And that's because the groundskeeper is now on patrol, and if he finds you, you will get kicked out. So, we're just going to go ahead and duck into the underground here. Because located underneath this mausoleum... Stretches a pretty long set of catacombs. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a lot of uh, a lot of burials down here. Maybe caskets lining the walls, but it does seem to be pretty intricate. Well, we do have a little bit of a split here before I go into the next little area. It is worth observing the fact that next to the set of bars here, we do find to be what appears to be, well, a button along with an indentation for what could very well be the plate that we're missing. That could very well mean that somewhere down in these catacombs, we might just be able to find that plate we're looking for. It seems, though, that it isn't long before we reach what could be considered a dead end for us.
But it also seems that we're not the only ones down here in the catacombs. Perhaps this is the the man whose family owns this mausoleum, and well, we are very, very much indeed trespassing, but... Even more curious, he has the plate that we're looking for. And, well, even though he's looking straight at us, we can pretty much go ahead and grab the plate. Uh, I feel like we might be pressing our luck by doing that. He doesn't really look all that friendly. So, we're just going to follow his orders and, I guess, take an alternate exit out of the catacombs here. Though, yeah, this, this isn't really an exit. Not the one we're looking for, at least. But, we want to be in a little bit of a hurry here and go ahead and grab this pendant off the murdered woman. Because it becomes pretty clear pretty quickly that we've been led into a very, very dangerous trap. And indeed, if that blade looks very familiar, especially being held by a gray-haired old man, that's because, yes, indeed, that is William Rockwell. So, as we make our daring escape, we need to make sure and pick up that plate. Mustn't forget the thing that we traveled back in time to get. But yeah, for now, we just need to get out of the catacombs, make our way back to the ladder, and hopefully back to safety. Problem is that, well, apparently William isn't working alone. He's got the assistance of the groundskeeper. The good thing is, since we did manage to pick out that plate, we can make an alternate means to get out of the catacombs. And you might be wondering why I'm not shutting the gate behind us, and that's because there doesn't seem to be a way to. Instead, this just seems to be, well, an action-packed sec section of the game with one final little puzzle here. Though it's not too difficult to solve with the hint it gives you. We just need to do the means of opening the gates, but in reverse. So, we press the button before we put in the plate. Making sure to pick up the plate. Never want to forget that, and... Well, we should finally be home free to make our way out of the catacombs, and with another piece of the puzzle.